Roll call, please. Oops. Mr. Hardy? Present. Mrs. Lopez? Present. Ms. Gonzalez? I believe she's still trying to get the link account. Uh, Mr. Morales? Present. Ms. Venteria? Present. Thank you. Tonight's flag salute will be led by Wilson Elementary School. My name is Isaac Morales. I'm student council's vice president for Wilson Elementary School. Please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you so much. Now we'll move on to student board reports, starting with Linwood Adult School. Do we have Linwood Adult School on the line? All right, how about Pathway High School? And again, if you're on the line, um, just a reminder to unmute yourself, star six. If you are on the line for the student report, star six to unmute yourself. All right, um, Vista High School. And Mr. Hardy, I apologize, but they were on the line a short while ago. So I know that Dr. Dinkins is reaching out to them, but if if like, um, let's go on to Fireball. Yep. Fireball High School, please. Good evening, Board President, Mr. Hardy, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Crosswhite, District Cabinet Members, and Lima Community. My name is Leslie Benitez, AUV Board Representative for Marco Antonio Farba High School, and this is our board report for June 4th, 2020. College to Career. Fireball College Career Center counselors are working on signing up students for online summer courses at local community colleges, as well as helping students sign up for online summer programs that are being offered by many organizations and universities during the pandemic. Club activities. This week, ASD held interviews for next year's ASD class and candidates for next year's ASV class cabinet will be announced this Friday. Next week, the candidates will campaign virtually and from a safe distance and school elections will be held on Thursday and Friday of next week. Senior and school events. This past week, Fireball seniors filmed their virtual graduations, which will be held on June 18. And on June 18 and 19, Fireball will host a senior farewell on campus. Sports. All sports have been postponed due to the inflammation of COVID-19 social distancing until further notice. With Falcon pride and ownership, this concludes the Marco Antonio Farabaugh High School Board Report. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll try uh, Pathway High School. Mr. Hardy, can you can you proceed? He's trying to get in. Just give him one second, please. All right, we'll we'll come back. Uh, Linwood High School. Good 
Good evening, Board President Mr. Hardy, Board Members, District Cabinet Members, and Linwood Community. I am Stephanie Carvajal, Linwood High School Student Board Representative. This is Linwood High School Student Board Report for th Thursday, June 4th. College and Career. The College and Career st Center staff is currently supporting students for enrollment in summer Compton College courses. Counselors are making sure to check upon students and make themselves available via remind and email. ASB activities. On Tuesday, June 2nd, some of our wonderful ASB students took the time to create posters in honor of Class of 2020. Posters from Black History Month, from the Black History Month Assembly were put up at the front of the school to show our language support towards the Black Lives Matter movement. Book return. On June 8th, seniors will be allowed to return books and Chromebooks at LHS. Time periods are organized alphabetically by last name. Students in, in 9th through 11th grade will be allowed to return textbooks through a drive through drop-off. Textbooks will be placed in a plastic bag with a piece of paper with the student's name and ID number. Returns will begin with juniors on June 9th, followed by sophomores on June 10th, then freshmen on June 15th. Makeups will be held on June 16th. Senior activities. Seniors will be allowed to pick up their diplomas and other graduating items on Thursday, June, June 11, last names A through L, and on Friday, June 12, last names M through C. A virtual graduation ceremony will be held on June 7, 17th at 6 p.m. to honor our graduating seniors for their hard work and dedication throughout these four years. Retirees. Lingwood High School has 13 retirees this year. Due to the stay-at-home order, we are not able to have a whole staff celebration as we planned. Each retiree will be honored and celebrated by their department. They each received a plaque, gift cards, and other small gifts. We would like to highlight five. Mr. Gutierrez, Ms. Cunningham, Mr. Villanueva, Ms. Dugan, and Ms. Senosa. All five have worked for Lingwood High School over 30 years. Mr. Gutierrez and Ms. Cunningham are both LHS alumni. Farewell. Serving the school board as a student board representative has been a wonderful experience this past school year. I am thankful to have had the opportunity to serve as a liaison between Lingwood High School, the school board, and our community. I would like to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to represent Lingwood High School. I would like to probably introduce the new Ling student board report for Lingwood High School, Syra Hernandez. We are truly proud of her and are eager to see her, her accomplishments this upcoming school year. As for myself, as I enter my senior year, I will humbly continue my journey to high school, serving Lingwood High School's ASB in my new position as ASB president. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my final student board report for Lingwood High School. Thank you. Thank you, Lingwood High School. Uh, moving on to Pathway, if you're ready. Mr. Hardy, um, the, the two of the kids are having some issues getting in, mm -hmm. um, so we should probably move move on. Um, they're saying that it won't let them in with the pin number and phone number, so we'll address that and we can move on to the next slide. Got it. Thank you for that. So. This is where we give our student board representative their um, recognition for serving in their student board positions for the 1920 school year. I will read um, the resolution for Linwood Community Adult School for Summer Sanchez, and I will um, read the personal parts of the one else. Our first student rep, Summer Sanchez, student representative to the board, Linwood Community Adult School. Whereas Summer Sanchez successfully completed her, completed her term as student representative to the Board of Education and has performed her duties in an exemplary manner. And whereas Summer is an articulate, intelligent, Linwood community adult school student and her reports have been well organized, comprehensive and delivered with clarity and sincerity. And whereas the Linwood Unified School District Board of Education has welcomed her interests, concerns and advice on many topics that come before the board. And whereas Summer has been a loyal member of Linwood Unified School District, demonstrated in her dedication and commitment to her studies. She is enrolled in the high school diploma program and has improved her computer skills. Summer is motivated to pursue higher education and plans to enroll in college next fall. Now, therefore, 
be it resolved that the governing board of Linwood Unified School District commends Summer Sanchez for her dedicated service, expresses its appreciation for her warm friendship, and extends its best wishes as she continues her education in the fall of 2020. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be made an integral part of the minutes of the June 4th, 2020 meeting of the Linwood Unified School District Board of Education, passed and adopted by the governing board of the Linwood Unified School District on June 4th, 2020, Gary Hardy Jr., board president and the board of education and superintendent Gudiel Odd Crossway, Dr. Crossway. So our next student is Pathway High School student, Christoforo Reza. Whereas Christoforo has been a loyal member of Linwood Unified Schools District, demonstrated in his dedication and commitment to his studies. He enjoys reading and hopes to travel the world. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing board of the Linwood Unified School District commends Christopher Reza's for his dedicated service, expresses his appreciation for his warm friendship, and extends his best wishes as he continues his education in the fall of 2020 at Cerritos College to major in philosophy. Congratulations, Christopher. Our next student is Vista High School, Giselle Felix. Whereas Giselle has been a loyal member of Linwood Unified School District, demonstrating her dedication and commitment to her studies. Giselle enjoys participating in community events and being a leader of her community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing board of the Linwood Unified School District commends Giselle Felix for her dedicated service, expresses its appreciation for her warm friendship, and extends its best wishes as she continues her education in the fall of 2020 at Cerritos College to major in criminal justice. She aspires to pursue a career in law enforcement. Congratulations, Giselle. Leslie Benitez, our Fireball High student representative. Leslie has been a loyal member of the Linwood Unified School District, demonstrating her dedication and commitment to her studies. She has a 4.13 GPA and is the top 10% of the junior class. Leslie is currently taking AP and IB courses and is a proud member of Associate Student Body. Leslie has been involved in Girls Inc. and enjoys spending time doing community service work. She is also an active member of the Zumba Club offered at Fireball High School. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the governing board of Linwood Unified School District commends Leslie Benitez for her dedicated service, expresses its appreciation for her warm friendship, and extends its best wishes as she prepares for her senior year at Fireball High School. She hopes to pursue a career in business and is interested in attending UC Santa Cruz. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. One more, sir. One more. I'm sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> um, Linwood High School, Stephanie Caraval. Stephanie has been a loyal member of Linwood Unified School District, demonstrating her dedication and commitment to her studies. She has managed to maintain a 3.9 GPA while engaging in ASB as Commissioner of Student Affairs. Stephanie's interest in the sport of soccer has encouraged her to be part of many private clubs, accomplish several wins in tournaments, and travel to Europe representing our country. She has taken AP courses and is currently taking her second community college course. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Governing Board of Linwood Unified School District commends Stephanie for her dedicated service, expresses his appreciation for her warm friendship, and extends his best wishes as she continues her education in the fall of 2020 at Linwood High School. She aspires to attend college in the fall of 2021 with a major in psychology. Congratulations to all of our student representatives. Job well done. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. And uh, just wanna again say congratulations to all of our student board representatives. And on top of the resolution, they will also be receiving a book scholarship from the Linwood Partners Education Foundation. Thank you. Next slide, please. And before I before we continue with the top ten, I want to just uh, welcome everyone to our meeting. I hope that each of you are doing well and that your family and you are safe and sound. Uh, I know that these are difficult and challenging times in our nation, and I know that on top of all the the pandemic and the economic challenges that we face, our communities and our nation is hurting. And I hope that. We can use these experiences to come together and truly make systemic changes that are much needed to make our world a better place. And I know that about seven years ago, then we unified adopted our core principles of equity, access, and justice. And I'm glad and proud to be here in, in Linwood. And I wanna just take a moment and thank our board 
for your leadership and for ver verbally speaking out against injustice and for your courageous leadership to make sure that we are doing everything possible to support our students. And I know that we have a lot to celebrate tonight and um, including our retirees. And of course, as you can see here, our top 10 and some additional student recognition. So with that, let me pass it back to Dr. Dinkins to recognize our class of 2020 uh, top 10 graduates. Dr. Dinkins. Yes, this is always an exciting time of the year. Thank you, Dr. Crossway, to acknowledge our top 10 Firewall High School students. Um, coming in at number 10, we have Emily Quintero with a 4.21 GPA attending Cal State University, Long Beach. Number nine, Elaine Lopez, 4.22 and attending UCLA. Number eight, Eduardo Del Rio with a 4.25 attending, attending Cal State University, Long Beach. Number eight, we had a two-way tie there. Number eight, Melissa Arzate, 4.25, Cal State University, Long Beach. Number seven, Norma Duran, with a 4.27 attending UC Irvine. Number six, Brenda Moreno-Leon, with a 4.29 attending UCLA. Number six again at a tie with Elizabeth Navarro, with a 4.29 GPA attending UCLA. Number five, Melanie Lopez with a 4.33 attending UC San Diego. Number four, Jennifer Lopez Estrada with a 4.45 attending UC Davis. And number three, Kyra Obeyed with a 4.48 attending USC. Next slide, please. And in another tie for number three, Evelyn Marquez with a 4.48 GPA attending USC. Symphony Escada, also number three, with a 4.48 GPA attending UCLA. Number two, Angelica Ramirez, with a 4.5 attending Stanford. And number two, Sylvia Naranjo, with a 4.5 attending UCLA. And the number one student, everybody give a silent drum roll for the top 10 Fireball High School, Arlie Paredes Mendiate, with a 4.6 attending UCLA. Way to go. Congratulations to all of our top 10 Fireball High School. Go Bruins. Go Bruins. <laughs> so now is the time to honor our top 10 from Linwood High School. In 10th place, Stephanie Martinez with a 4.1 attending Cal State University, Dominguez Hills. Number nine, Stephanie Zavala with a 4.14 attending Cal State University Fullerton. Number nine, also uh, we have a four, almost five way tie for number nine at Alejandro Navarro with a 4.14 attending UC Davis. Also at number nine, Chelsea Morales with a 4.14 attending UC Berkeley. And number nine, Jaron Johnson with a 4.14 attending Dartmouth College. Number nine, Miguel Gutierrez, 4.14, attending UCLA. Number eight, Catherine Hernandez with a 4.15, Cal State University, Long Beach. Number eight, Valerie Brasino with a 4.15, San Diego State. Number eight, again, Emmanuel Perez with a 4.15, Cerritos College. Number eight, April Castaneda with a 4.15, UC San Diego. Next slide, please. Number seven, thank you, Giselle Romero with a 4.16 UC Santa Barbara. Number seven, Melanie Pacheco Garcia with a 4.16 UCLA. Number seven, um, I'm sorry, number six, Dulce Cam Camarillo with a 4.26 UC Irvine. I skipped Daniel, sorry, Daniel. Number seven, Daniel Perez Picardo with a 4.16 UC Irvine. Number five, Jasmine Romero with a 4.28, Cal State University, Long Beach. Number four, Stephanie Rodriguez with a 4.35, Cal State University, Los Angeles. And number three, Andrea Flores with a 4.38, UCLA. Number three, Sophia Medina with a 4.38, Cal State University, Long Beach. Number two, Ariana Enriquez with a 4.4, UC Davis. And drum roll, please, for the top student at Linwood High School, Andres Al Andrea Alvarez, 
UCLA. Congratulations to the top 10 of Linwood High School. We are proud of you, Linwood Strong. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about our graduation requirements. I, I, I missed the live interaction with the kids. I'm so proud of all of them. Um, over the three last three years, you can see in our one year snapshot, the number of students graduates and the graduation rate. Um, and you can see here at the bottom of this chart, um, the, the way our grad rate has progressed and that these numbers will change because this is just as of June 1st. I want to bring your attention to the next slide and why this is so important as it pertains to the amendment of the board policy. Let me clarify, board policy 6146.1 are the graduation requirements for the Linwood, High, Linwood Unified School District. Um, as you may know, as a result of COVID-19, we have been given an opportunity, um, every district makes the local decision to amend their graduation requirements for the 2019-2020 class. Our requirements in the area of English language arts and math are higher than the state requirements. So what I did here is I explained two charts so that you could clearly see how, how adopting and amending our local graduation requirements will facilitate um, more students being able to graduate. Um, we will always need summer school. This is just the senior class. Algebra one um, is still um, needed and um, a year in English. We have four years, the state requirement is three. So um, as you can see, our, the needle moves here with the graduation rate by allowing us to amend this policy by using California's requirements versus linguist requirements. And as you can see, it moves the needle in our um, graduation rate as you look at the last um, line in each column. Um, this number also is subject to change as um, VISTA and Pathway usually have some minor calculated adjustments as we get towards the end of the grading period. Are there any questions for me about the graduation requirement and the recommendation to amend our graduation requirements for the 1920 school year? Seeing any questions, let's go to the next slide, please. So due to COVID-19, we were unfortunately not able to celebrate our Mathathon winners. We actually had to cancel the second half of it, but we would be remiss to not congratulate our Mathathon champions from Will Rogers Elementary third grade and with their wonderful coaches of Kevin McClinton and Jacqueline Sandlin and wonderful, amazing principal, Amanda Noriega. Congratulations to the third grade champions for the Mathathon, Xavier Martinez, Alexander Munoz, Dorian Martinez, Daniel Rodriguez, Alan Robles, and Jenny Chen. Way to go, Will Rogers. Next slide, please. And our fourth grade champions from Abbott Elementary, coaches Celia Ortiz Baldwin and principal Kevin Cano. Thank you, um, Jonathan Ornat, Joseph Mata, Damian Esparza, Aiden Gomez, Sophie Bastian, and Evelyn Sorto. Congratulations to Abbott Elementary on your fourth grade championship for the 1920 school year Mathathon competition. And our recognition for our students being awarded the Seal of Literacy. This is awarded to students who have attained proficiency in two or more language, with one of those language being um, English by graduation. We are proud of our students who are receiving this prestigious distinction. We have 62 students from Linwood High School, 75 from Fireball High School. The Seal of Literacy will um, be placed on their diploma. They will also receive certificates during the graduation. They will also be um, honored. Their names will be called. And I just wanna say congratulations to all the students who made the extra, extra effort to, uh, to be awarded the Seal of Biliteracy. I'm sorry, I'm trying to talk too fast. Let me slow down. Um, this is a big deal because as you know, um, learning two languages takes an uh, enormous amount of effort and they proved um, their proficiency in both English and Spanish. Most of these students um, attained this syllabi literacy by staying in the same foreign language for four years. Congratulations to all of our students with the syllabi literacy. Job well done. And this concludes my part. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, Dr. Dickens. Nice job. And glad to see that we were able to recognize all of our students. And continuing with our presentation, we have our 2019-20 retirees. And Dr. Lucas will be helping us with this presentation. Good evening, board members uh, and all of our remote watchers. My name is Brian Lucas, and I'm the proud Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources for Linwood Schools. And this particular recognition is very meaningful to me. I think sometimes I'm in a great position in HR because bottom line, I like adore school employees. I think that school employees have a special place um, because the work that we do is so, so important and it changes lives. And uh, we also know sometimes conditions aren't exactly the best. We don't have big fancy high rises like in Century City lawyers or things like that. But we work very, very hard at what we do and give our heart to the children and to the community. And so uh, recognizing those who have spent an entire career in education and also in Linwood is incredibly uh, important and meaningful to me. Um, this year, we do have uh, 77 retirees, which is a large number. We have 50 certificated and 22 classified. And uh, uh, some of the employees you'll see when uh, the HR directors review our retirees this year, we have some folks who have worked for Linwood for 42 or 43 years. And I don't know about you, but uh, 43 years ago, I was just starting grade school. And uh, I just, I am so overwhelmed by the fact uh, of their commitment to uh, working and supporting the children of Linwood uh, for obviously basically a lifetime. So um, with no further ado, I'm going to have uh, Carlos Zaragoza, please join the call and he will uh, inform us all about our certificated retirees, um, which you will see an impressive list and an impressive service. Thank you, Dr. Lucas. Good evening, uh, Board President uh, Hardy, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Crosswaith, and Cabinet. Um, as uh, Dr. Lucas mentioned, uh, it's an honor to present these retirees to you and to the community of Linwood. Um, before I get to that, though, I'm glad to see the two valedictorians, the schools that they chose. That's nice. So. So we can go to the next slide here. So we have several. Um, I think one of the things that I've really enjoyed is I've had a chance to really work closely with a, several of these. There are several that are that are leaving the school that I was previously at, but we'll go down the list here. Um, we have Donovan Henry, five years of service. Uh, he was at adult school as an adult school teacher. Yvette Gazarian, who has nine years of service at Linwood High School as a CTE teacher, auto, the auto teacher there. Sammy Hamamoto, 11 years of service, Fireball High School, bio, biology teacher. Georgina Paul, 12 years of service, Lincoln Elementary, first, first grade teacher. Susie Lockhead, uh, 13 years of service, Linwood High School, special education. Diola Miller, 13 years of service, uh, Linwood High School Special Education. Judy Rutledge, Linwood Middle School, 13 years of service, um, English and AVID. Uh, Lourdes Pineda, 14 years of service, Lugo Elementary Special Education. Uh, we have Mr. Wang, David Wang, 14 years of service, Fireball High School, bi um, biology math teacher. Armando Garcia, 15 years of service, Linwood Middle Science teacher. Uh, Yones Mari, 15 years of service, Fireball High School math teacher. Jose Colin, 16 years of service, Fireball High School uh, Spanish teacher. Kathleen Rickle, 16 years of service, adapted PE teacher in our special ed department. Zorin Shabani, 16 years of service, Linwood High School math teacher. Uh, Adesina Adiyinka, 17 years of service, Wilson Elementary second year teacher. Ike Ani, Lindbergh Elementary, 19 years of service, sixth grade elementary teacher. Then we have Ms. Duru, 19 years of service, Linwood High School biology teacher. Matt McGowan, 19 years of service, Linwood High School English teacher. 19 years of service, Joseph Powell, Linwood High School CTE culinary arts. And Greta Price, 19 years of service, Lindbergh Elementary fourth grade teacher. Now we get into people who've been here 20 years or more. Um, Martin Edelman, 20 years of service, Linwood High School English teacher. Lisa Alvarado, 20 years, Fireball High School English teacher. 
Michael Montoya, 20 years of service, Vista High School, science teacher. Steven Shishimura, 20 years of service, Fireball High School, uh, science teacher. 21 years of service, Emma Emma, Hostler Middle School, math teacher. 21 years of service, Clevin McClintock, Will Rogers, third grade teacher. Uh, Carmelita Newchurch, 21 years of service, Marshall Elementary, second grade teacher. Christine Peterson, 21 years of service, Rosa Parks, second grade teacher. Ahmed Osadi, 22 years of service, uh, Mark Twain, fifth grade teacher. Sandra Gillespie, 24 years of service in the child development, early childhood teacher. Rosalina Nahar, 24 years of service at the Will Rogers Child Care Center as an early childhood teacher. Daniel Mogbo, 25 years of service, Linwood Middle uh, Science teacher. And we have Joe Renee Wilson, 28 years of service, Linwood High School Special Education. Guadalupe Saavedra, 30 years of service, Lugo Elementary Special Education teacher. So now we're getting into the 30 years. Eric Emmons, 31 years of service, Vista, math teacher. Lisa Mert, 31 years of service, Roosevelt Elementary, first grade teacher. James Ricketts, 31 years of service, Wilson Elementary, sixth grade teacher. Terry Dugan, 32 years of service, Linwood High School, anatomy teacher. Daryl Jacobson, 32 years of service, Hostler Middle School PE teacher. Diane Shenazan, 32 years of service, Linwood High PE teacher. Mary Stussy, 34 years of service, Wilson Elementary, first grade teacher. Connie Marietta, 35 years of service at Mark Twain as an instructional lead. Dorothy Cole, 36 years of service, special education psychology, uh, psychologist. Carolyn Cunningham, 36 years of service, Linwood High School um, psychology and government teacher. Carolyn Jones, 36 years of service, Washington Elementary, second grade teacher. Judy Vegas, 37 years of service, Mark Twain, kind, uh, kindergarten teacher. Elias Villanueva, 38 years of service, Linwood High School, Spanish teacher. And then now people who've done, who've served 40 years of service in our district. Gustavo Gutierrez, 40 years of service, Linwood High School, history teacher. Then we have Paula Howard, 42 years of service, Fireball High School counselor, and also Margaret Jackson, 42 years of service, Pathway. She was an independent study teacher. So we would like to congratulate these retirees and wish them a, a lot of luck and, and a lot of, lot of uh, rest now that they get a chance to, to, to retire. And I know the tradition uh, at, at Linwood High School that I was aware of was the Ha Ha Club. So now they can join the Ha Ha Club. And if you don't know about the Ha Ha Club, the Ha Ha Club gets together the first day of school. They get together and have breakfast. They turn towards the district and they all wave and say ha ha to everybody that's still working. So maybe one day we'll all be part of the ha ha club uh, and join them on the first day of school. So congratulations to all these retirees. We wish them the best and thank you very much. Uh, I wanna reiterate the the echo that sentiments that Dr. Crossway said. It was, it, it's been great to, uh, to hear the board and, and everybody respond and communicate to our community. So thank you so much for that. It's really made our job as directors, working with our employees much easier um, because the communication has been really great with the community and with our employees. So thank you. And now I'll hand it over to Jiki for the classified. Mr. Mayor, are you available? Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna jump in and Jiki, if you get back on the line, please feel free to join me here. Our classified retirees, Janice Newton, 14 years of service, uh, senior health services technician at Wilson Elementary. 
Keith Aaron Bogan, 19 years as a security officer within our security department. Patricia Aurora Chavez, 19 years an office assistant at Linwood High School. Saul Orlando Zoria, 19 years senior HVAC air conditioning mechanic in Department of Maintenance and Transportation. Helen Machuca, 20 years as instructional assistant special ed at Wilson Elementary School most recently. We have Ronald Cara Cloutier, 21 years as a maintenance worker in maintenance and operations. Eartha Renee Durham, 21 years as a bus driver, I was in the transportation department. Deborah Cuthbert, 22 years as a secretary in MOT. Amy Hyden, 22 years as a health technician in community adult school. Virginia Ortega, 22 years as instructional assistant special needs at Linwood High School. Carolyn Williams, 22, nutrition service supervisor at Linwood High School. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah go, go ahead. Okay, good evening, Board President Hardy, Board Members, Superintendent Joshua, Cabinet Members, and the Inwood community. So let me continue on now. Uh, I'm picking up on the on Edna Antoinette Schuler, 23 years, is a nutrition service worker for Mark Twain Elementary School. Maricruz Gonzalez, 25 years, is instructional assistant special education at Lugo Elementary School. Brenda Robertson, 25 years as Nutrition Service Satellite Kitchen Operator at Mark Twain Elementary School. Amaro Sabalsa served 25 years as electrician. Michael Whitfield, 28 years as custodian at, custodian at Marshall Elementary School. Griselda Rodriguez, 29 years Administrative Assistant for the Educational Services Department. And now the, the prime year is Twitch. 32, 30 years for Renee Johnson, a senior buyer for purchasing department. Rhonda Denise Moore, 35 years, fiscal manager for fiscal services. Sandra Renfro, 40 years as instructional assistant, Hostler Middle School. Margaret Hinojosa, 43 years as secretary at Wilson Elementary School. And last but not the least, Maria Rivera, 43 years as computer lab assistant, Wilson Elementary School. As Director of Classified Personnel, this is now my second year participating in recognition events such as this, and I am truly humbled to see the dedication of Linwood employees who have given a lifetime of service to our district. So we'd like to thank each one of these retirees for their loyalty, dedication, and selfless service to the students of Linwood Unified School District and their families. And we wish each one of you the full enjoyment of retirement that you so richly earned and deserve. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Great, thank you very much, Carlos and, and Jiki. Before I turn it back to you, Dr. Crossway, just want to say these uh, the season of these recognitions. We had our employees of the year in the last couple of weeks, and then today with retirees. I know we've said it again and again, but I'm going to say it one more time. It doesn't do justice doing this on a Zoom meeting, and um, we do have plans for when we're all able to join back together uh, with proper precautions and all that sort of stuff to. Um, have some in-person celebration to really recognize these people. So um, with that, I uh, conclude my part of the report. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dr. Lucas, Mr. Saragossa, and Ms. Ormeo. And Mr. Hardy, I believe that we have the three students who were not able to uh, share their report with us on the line at, the, at this moment. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Is Pathway High School ready? <laughs> How about Vista High School? Good evening, Board President, Mr. Hardy, and the Board of Education, Superintendent Dr. Crossway members of the cabinet and the Linwood community. My name is Chiselle Felix, I am the student board representative and a member of ASD for Vista High School. This is staff and students are working diligently together as we travel to these uncharted territories. The students are working with students online through Google Classroom, and VLA, Zoom, and along with hand jobs as needed. This is staff has been distributing packets to all our students without computer internet access. Staff is continuing to call and email students returning computer assignments and pick up from the pharmacy fees. We are monitoring everyone to ensure we are safely distancing from one of the safety items. This staff has also been distributing Chromebooks as needed 
students to ensure assistance with remote learning is provided. This is seniors are continuing to see faster college applications grad check assistance from Mr. Ramos and Amendment via online. The Vista and Pathway Virtual Graduation Ceremony will be held on YouTube for viewing June 15 at 5 p.m. The staff of Vista and Pathway will be honoring 2020 graduates with a graduate ceremony on June 15, 1 o'clock to 5 p.m. Congratulations to the class of 2020. This concludes the Vista High School Report. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is Linwood Community Adult School ready? All right, you can proceed Dr. Crossway. And President Hardy, that concludes our report for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to Boardman's report, starting with Ms. Renteria. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. So I'm going to start off first on what's been on my mind, and then I, will, I really do want to congratulate all of our students and all of our staff. But I think the last couple of days have at least for me, really forced me to reflect in our roles as school leaders um, because we serve predominantly Latino community. Um, and I know my own school is predominantly Latino and that means that our families are watching uh, Spanish news. And one of the most disappointing things in the last couple of days has just been how the Spanish media has continued to focus on the looting and all the negative aspects of of what's been occurring uh, across our country. And the reality is that it's not just looting that's happening. These protests are happening because George Floyd died and, and their police brutality has now reached a, a point where enough is enough and people are tired. Um, but one of the, the bigger, I think, issues that all of this has highlighted for me, um, because I'm having donuts with that tomorrow virtually with my kids, and I, and I kept thinking about, how they took that away from George Floyd's daughter and how many children have now lost the opportunity to have donuts with dad for the rest of their lives because the police couldn't get it together. Um, and they keep being provided the resources to do what they want. So I think that in seeing the news the way it's been, it's it's been a, a very sharp reminder that as school leaders, it is our responsibility to have tough conversations with our staff, uh, to ensure that our teachers feel equipped uh, to have these com challenging co uh, conversations with their students, even at the elementary level. I know that I, I saw that we we um, were being proactive and we held um, a discussion, kind of virtual discussion with some of our high school students. And I love that, we should be doing that. But I always think about our elementary kids and the fact that we don't always think about our little ones. And yet those are the students that we really need to ensure we teach about race and diversity because that's always been important. But right now it's a crucial time to ensure that we talk to them about um, what they're seeing on TV and ensuring that they know the facts and they don't just go off of what they hear their parents talk about because that's how all of this starts. Um, students are innately born to love one another. I mean, the one thing my little, uh, my godson hates, it's when we say, okay, go take a nap. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like he hates naps, um, but he doesn't hate anything else than other than naps. So I just wanna make sure that this is a time for all of our school leaders to really uh, take it upon themselves. This is my challenge to you as your responsibility to ensure that we teach our kids empathy. We remind them um, of the value of love and, and we do our best to um, promote that united we are so much stronger and not have to wait for another uh, incident to occur in order to anger us again. Uh, this is a time to really take action. And, and I really do hope that as we continue um, the next couple of weeks, I know that as a school district, we've done a lot. And I really do appreciate the leadership from our school board president to our cabinet to all the way to our partnerships with the city. I know we're doing our part. Uh, and yet I know we can still do so much more, especially with their little ones. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that. But I also wanted to ensure that I take the opportunity um, to thank our students because I know that 
as it is, they were already so sad that they were losing out on their graduations and whatnot because of the pandemic. And now there's almost this like cloud over all of us because everyone feels it. it it's such a um, it's such a challenging uh, time. But I want to make sure that they do know that their work is being acknowledged, and we are so 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 proud of you. I'm. Um, I was a little bit uh, emotional when I was seeing the top 10 from both schools because uh, about eight of those students went with us to the East Coast trip last year. And that's where I met a lot of them. Uh, our, both of our valedictorians, um, I know them. One of them was part of our East Coast trip. And the other one, for those of you that don't know, our Linwood High School valedictorian, she gave, uh, she was a student speaker for Washington as like the class president of at Washington Elementary School. And I remember her teacher, Mr. Crutchfield, coming up to me and sharing, she's gonna do big things. Like, I need you to keep an eye out for her. And I thought, uh, absolutely. And that was my first year on the board. So I was super excited to meet uh, a potential little Alma. But then she just outgrew me and I was like, oh my God, this girl. And she did it again at the eighth grade promotion. She was our speaker. So to know that now she's our valedictorian, uh, it's just, it's so nice to see our students grow into the leaders that they don't just have the potential to be, but we really do see it in them and we tell them and then they become it. And that's the beauty to it, uh, to the beauty to mentorship and the beauty to uh, seeing our students just become who they're meant to be. Uh, so congratulations to all of our graduating students. Uh, we're super proud of you. And just another shout out to all of our staff, uh, to our retirees, we're really gonna miss you, but go enjoy your haha -ha moment because I can't wait for it. Um, and just to all of our district, it is such an honor to work, uh, to be able to serve with the community that is making this a priority. I'll tell you firsthand, there have been other districts that haven't even released a statement. And that says the message in itself. So I really, really do um, appreciate and commend the leadership that we've all demonstrated. And I hope that we can continue to work together and stand united um, against just systematic racism. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Morales. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Um, I, I guess I wanna start off by acknowledging you, Mr. Hardy. Uh, I can't imagine uh, the weight of the pressure you must feel as being the only African-American um, elected official in the city of Linwood. And I wanna acknowledge what you've done and you speaking out and you helping us gain some kind of perspective because I think that um, what we are looking for is guidance. And in a time which unfortunately most of us feel that we are uh, void of it from the national uh, arena that we don't have a president that gave a statement this whole last weekend when things were happening, uh, people were struggling to find you know, guidance. And um, uh, President Obama, issued something that I, you know, resonated with me and the way that I took it and I remember it is, you know, he said something to the effect that the protesters or the people that were looting, that if they um, want uh, police that are ethical, police that are responsible, that they must exude those same qualities that they seek to get from their police department. And one of the other things that, you know, came to mind that I guess we've all been struggling. It's not really us against the police or the people against the police because it's not all police. It's just us against racism as a whole and also what I would call institutionalized racism. And what we in this district have done and what I've been committed to, and I think everybody has on this board and on this administrative team and on this school district is bridging the gap of education between our students and the others. And we're usually the others though, but we've been bridging that gap. And you know, on a day that we acknowledge our top 10, our students are going off to uh, places of higher education, which we're very proud of. A number of them to UCLA, may I add, and, um, and also USC, I won't, I won't leave them out. But I mean, I'm very proud of all of them. Um, the ones going to Davis, Irvine, uh, you know, the whole gamut. Uh, we're very proud of our students, but that's our goal. Our goal is to uh, bridge that gap so that it doesn't matter where we come from, but at the end of the day, what will matter is where we end. And that is what our students have control over. And that's what I'm here to help and support do. And I think everyone else is too. And 
even though we are in a dark time in our history, it's also a bright time in our history. As um, Mr. Floyd's uh, daughter said, uh, daddy changed the world. And I really hope that that is the case and that her dad has changed the world and that we will be able to do right by him in picking up the torch and not allowing people to forget, not allowing him to be another statistic. And for us to demand that we all deserve better, that whenever we get pulled over by the police, we don't wonder what's gonna happen at the end of this. Or am, I, am I gonna get a ticket or is this gonna get out of hand? And I think all minorities feel that way, even though our African-American brothers seem to be um, sacrificed the most and have been um, unfairly uh, targeted. Um, and I'm proud of the people who have stood besides our African-American community and have marched and have walked, have talked, have debated, have had conversations, have not shied away from looking at the ugly truth that racism does exist. Racism has continued to exist and it is an integral part of the fabric of this country and we must change it. And we start by recognizing it and then we change it. Um, and with that being said, I just hope that everyone continues to have the optimism that we should have, because if there's anything that this country stands for, it's hope. And, and, and that's what we all have is we have hope and we will continue to move forward every day. We close the year out um, acknowledging our students and honoring them and also our retirees. Um, not to be too biased, but I do want to acknowledge Mr. Villanueva, who's my Spanish teacher, and after 38 years is calling me quits. I thought the man would never retire. I thought he was going to retire 10 years ago, but he loved teaching. And uh, I know his daughters are happy that he has finally decided to retire and enjoy his grandchildren. And I hope all our retirees enjoy their golden years that they so richly deserve and that they enjoy their ha-ha moment because they have been in the trenches for so many years and have struggled along with us to move and to bridge the achievement gap. Uh, and with that said, I yield my time. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Thank you. Ms. Gonzalez. Good evening, everyone. Um, I too just wanna acknowledge um, that we are in a very difficult but critical time. That I know that many of us probably are experiencing a liberal coaster of different heightened emotions. Like you might be angry sometimes, <sighs> um, full of frustration or an immense feeling of solidarity and hopefulness and at times even numbness. And I, we've been really pushed to have these really difficult conversations and face the facts of what my colleagues are saying that this has been hap is happening right now because of all the systematic inequalities that have been happening over and over for centuries. And I know that it really, it hurts and it's, it's hard, but it's not okay that someone has to fear for their life just because they exist and i'm proud to say that our board i know stands in solidarity for all those that want equality justice and just human dignity we do the work that we do because we know that everyone deserves deserves it and deserves all the opportunities and i know that our district isn't perfect there's still so much work that we can do but i i'm also know that I can say that our board is committed to being part of the solution and reflecting and seeing how we can even improve what we're doing. <clears throat> and I also want to um, share my appreciation for all of our staff. I know that they and our president and President Hardy for taking the opportunity to give our students a voice to share um, how they're feeling and about the death of George Floyd and the social unrest. So I just wanna thank you for that and just continue to see how we can continue to listen to our students, to our communities and just do better for everyone. Um, as well, I just want to congratulate all of our graduating class. 
Um, and a special shout out for all our 20, our top 10 students. Um, I think every year we're just also amazed because I've never, every time we mention this, these GPAs, these are just amazing. <laughs> I remember back in my day, <laughs> almost 20 years ago, um, I you hardly saw students that did such amazing work. And I just want to let you know that I want to congratulate you. Con kudos on your hard work and your great achievement. We're very proud of you. And we can't wait to see all the amazing things that you do. Also want to congratulate all our retirees, our classified and certifi certificated staff. Um, you chose to be part of Linwood for so many years. Um, and you're leaving an uh, imprint in our community. And um, we just hope that you enjoy um, all your, your time and it's full of a lot of fun and happiness. And just thanks again for all of your years of service. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Ms. Lopez, you're, on, you're talking, you're, you're on mute still. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can hear you now. Um, good afternoon to all the administrators, uh, President Mr. Hardy, board members and community um, that is with us right now. Um, I just wanted to communicate that Linwood Unified School District along with the board members are united and this situation that is going on right now. Um, there is no wars, what we have seen in the last decades. So in our part is time to just inform the students, uh, take them in account and give them leadership to be prepared for the future. And the future is like we were talking about racist, racism, is something that is a new, total new phase that we need to change. Um, on the other hand, I am very proud of all the students that actually were with us for a year, sitting in our board. And uh, I feel very proud of uh, Summer Sanchez uh, Community Adult School, Stephanie Carvajal from Lino High School, Leslie Benitez, Farbo, Vista, Giselle Felix, and Pathway Christopher. They make a change sitting with us, and it was a great experience. Uh, also, that 10 top students, um, probably Mr. Guriel already communicated to the board that uh, Plaza Mexico uh, want us to give them their names, picture of that top 10 students, official school, to put in a, in a billboard in the 105 freeway. They approached me, and now Mr. Guriel is the one that is following up with, uh, with that. It's going to be beautiful uh, seeing them and the, from the freeway if this takes place. Uh, also, thank you to all the certificated classified employees for all the years of service. What I can say only, when you feel sad, or you feel that you miss the schools, come back. Come back and be a volunteer, visit your schools, and you're going to feel happy. So thank you very much, and congratulations to all the students, to all graduate students, and thank you to the staff for being with us in this difficult time. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. Um, so for, for me, I just uh, first want to acknowledge um, the entire school district um, as a family, my, my board and superintendent for um, all of you reaching out to offer support, to start the dialogue around what we've seen that has tugged at the hearts of all of us um, around the world. It's a global mourning over the loss of life and the loss of, of dignity. And I think particularly now it has hit us in a vulnerable place um, because we are all recognizing our humanity and our role in ensuring that we are fighting back against injustice in every form. Um, it is said that injustice that we're seeing playing out on social media, being captured on, on video, is not new. 
George Floyd's death was not the first of this kind. But for some reason, um, it caught our attention in such a way that this one um, felt different. Um, the scene of it seemed to hurt more. It seemed to draw more from us. Um, and folks that had not been talking about race as an issue are now trying to understand what they can do to be a part to make sure that that type of injustice doesn't happen again. Um, the tough part is we're still having to explain to people um, how to value every life. Um, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had trying to explain the difference between saying all lives matter and black lives matter. The reality is, is that um, until there are no more kids in cages, until no one is discriminated against for who they love or how they worship, until every school is funded at the same level, until uh, women are able to make decisions over, over their body free from infringement, and until black men are not dying in the streets unarmed, we cannot say that all lives matter. And as a school district, we must do our part to make sure that our district is free from systemic racism and institutionalized racism as well. Make sure that we, uh, in every way possible, make sure that every student has an opportunity to, to thrive, regardless of their social economic status, and especially regardless of their race. Um, we have a community that is strength is derived from our unity and our diversity. Um, and it's been beautiful to see the amount of people that are now committed to having the conversation um, and in many ways rip off the scab of a wound that has uh, hurt a lot of us over the course of the generations of our family. I can speak to my family who moved here uh, from, and from Mississippi in the 1950s in the height of Jim Crow and felt discrimination even here in, in Southern California, that this is a legacy that has been passed on uh, from the foundation of this country and we're still having this fight. And that was reiterated when we spoke to our students who um, really put our feet to the fire and asked us as adults, um, why is this time different? If your grandparents were talking about this same issue and your parents had the same fight, why should we believe um, that this time will be different? But like Mr. Uh, Gonzalez uh, Morello said, um, something about this feel different because I, I, I'm hopeful that when people are now paying attention, um, we can have honest dialogue about what it will take to root out this issue um, for good. Um, so with, with that said, I, you know, again, I just want to reiterate the, the points that we said in our statement, and, you know, is that the, the value of human dignity is what should unite us all. And that's the very end of it. No other discussion needs to be happen, happening unless we're talking about how we value the human dignity of everyone. And what, what we saw last uh, on last Monday was that a police officer abused his authority, violated his social contract to protect and serve and rob someone of his human dignity. And that has happened in so many forms. And as a district, um, we're proud to stand against that type of um, injustice and make sure that our community as well and hold as much as possible. Um, and in that, um, I want to commemorate and, and honor our em employees here, um, our teachers and staff that are retiring. Um, when I see numbers like working here for 42 years, I'm just mind blown because I'm not even that old. And to fathom working in the same place for that long is uh, just outstanding. And to do so at a level of excellence that has allowed you to make an impact across generations of people's lives. Um, I can speak to my family. There's teachers on that list who taught my oldest sister who just turned 51 and some that taught me as well. So, and that's very true of, around Linwood that you, you'll sometimes have teachers who taught their students stuff, children. Um, and that's just reflective of the dedication of the people that live and work in, in this community. And um, I don't know if Mr. Uh, uh, Zaragoza is supposed to give up the secrets of the ha ha um, breakfast. I thought that was a, a closely guarded secret, but now the secret's out and I'm looking forward to having uh, my ha ha moment at, at some point in my career as well. But um, you, you all that are retiring uh, certainly deserve um, the recognition you're, you're getting, um, but also the rest that, that you um, earned. And hopefully, um, you're going out in retirement with some gas left in the tank so you can still enjoy life 
and make sure that you make the, the most of the time that you now have that's freed up from having to work. And to our students, um, the top 10, but the entire graduating class, it is, it is so commendable um, how you all persevered through this pandemic uh, and distance learning, which was a steep learning curve for all of us. It was uh, uh, a challenge to stay focused, to stay engaged, to log in. Um, and I, I commend you for uh, finishing this race to the end. We're about a week away from graduations, and I'm excited to um, have a moment to celebrate um, all that you've done the, uh, over the course of your your school career, and especially in this in this senior year that just had you know just tremendous challenges. Um, but what, what I would say is I think that I'm um, always hopeful um, in our younger generation because they're more and more we're seeing them um, question why things are the way they are and why things can't be better, but more so uh, leaning in to to find solutions about how to bring about change and making sure that. Um, the world that they envision for their even their children um, is better than the one that, that they've uh, been brought into. So um, even on our call, again, the students challenged us to think critically and, and innovatively about how we move forward and uh, knowing that we won't be able to repeat or fix the past. We can we can um, definitely prepare a, a better future. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited to, to learn about the stories that we hear for my students that go off to college and career and hopefully most of them uh, come home and work in Linwood and, and be a part of the change that, that we're uh, working towards here. Uh, so just in closing, um, I think right now it's important um, to have those conversations around um, policy change, you know, behavior change, educating folks, av uh, greater advocacy uh, to make sure that uh, we're not just talking about um, what we value, uh, but it's in our everyday work and we're reflecting our values and how we treat people, how we educate our kids, you know, the staff that we hire um, should all reflect our values as a district, but also um, as a people respecting the, the, the very heart and human dignity of everyone we uh, come in contact with. And I know we can't change everybody's heart and minds. Um, some people are not willing to have the conversation to be educated about the things that people are marching in the, in the street for. Um, but I'm still ever hopeful, and I, I still know that it's, it's important and absolutely necessary to continue to push forward and have these conversations so that we can make sure that we're doing our part, because this is a righteous cause, and I cannot uh, reiterate that enough. So again, thank you all. Um, to you all have uh, reached out for to check on me, um, but also to those of you that reached out to be a part of conversations about solutions and, and how we secure uh, real change in, in this country, and especially for our district as well. So now we'll move on to item number 11, uh, governing board resolutions, proclamations, and appointments. We have three. Item 11A is uh, accommodation of student representatives to the Board of Education. What recorded you uh, Item 11B is uh, recognizing and, honor and honoring the certificated employee retirees. Item 11C is um, recognizing classified employees retirees we'll we'll take all three together is there is there a motion i move a second any discussion roll call please mr hardy yes Ms. lopez Ms. lopez you're muted. Yes. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez. Yes. Ms. Morales. Yes. And Ms. Lenteria. Yes. Thank you very much. Is there any public comment this evening? No, sir. So now we'll move on to item number 14, um, action items. Um, there, uh, uh, yes. If uh, the board and the, the president, Mr. Um, Gary, is in agreement, we can move um, 14B1 all the way through 14B5, because all of, all of them are related to um, the major end that is playgrounds. Mm -hmm. And it's something that is already been approved. We are just accepting the finishing of the projects. Yes. Um, 
Uh, before we move, we entertain a motion. Uh, if it pleases the board, we, we can take all um, item, item 14 action items together in one vote unless there is a rejection. Seeing now, we'll entertain a motion to approve item 14 action items. So move. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Yes, sir. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. Is he still there? He said yes. yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I froze yes. up over here. Thank you. And Ms. Venteria? Yes. And Mr. Hardy, just a reminder, I think we might have skipped a game. I think, yes, it, we, we included that under item 14 as, as a whole. Got it. Thank you. So now we move on to consent agenda. So move. Anyone want to second? I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Ms. Morales? Yes. Ms. Santeria? Yes. Thank you so much. Now, so item 16, report out of closed session. Um, did we take action on 15? I'm sorry, I just wanna make sure. Yes, we just took um, action on 15. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. President. With reference to section six of the agenda, item 6A with 5-0 votes, the board approved settlement, including attorney's fees in the amount of $5,000. Item 6A2 with 5-0 votes, the board approved settlement, including attorney's fees in the amount of $7,500. On items 6B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and 6, with 4 to 0 votes, uh, Mr. Morales not present, the board voted to approve settlement, including payment as follows. Item B1, $494.76. 2, $238.71. Number 3, $483.71. Number 4, $668.16. Number five, $1,104.28. And number six, $650.80. In reference to item 6B7, with five to zero votes, the board appointed Jamal Corner to the position of public information officer. Item 6.7, the board did not consider this item, and that concludes the readout from closed session. Thank you, sir. Now move on to adjournment. Um, if there is no objection, this meeting is adjourned at 7.30 p.m. until the June 25th, 2020 scheduled board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you God bless. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.